Good afternoon. I'd like to call this uh, board, uh, the, the meeting of the uh, Board of License Commissioners to order at 1.03 p.m. on Friday, uh, April 5th, 2019. I'll begin by stating that, just for the record, uh, this, uh, this meeting is being recorded, uh, both audio and video, uh, potentially for later broadcast, or certainly being made available online, so I want people to know that they are um, on camera. Uh, the second thing I'll mention is that because of that, we will want people who want to ask questions as we go through the process and we go through uh, getting uh, the various pieces of the meeting done, we will want people to use the microphone so that they get recorded onto the audio. Um, and so we'll have you step to microphones as necessary. Uh, I'll begin by laying out what we're doing today as far as order of events. We're going to have a public hearing relative to a, um, a potential violation of uh, the alcohol license. Um, what we'll do first is I'll open the, the public hearing. We'll hear testimony from the, uh, the police officers in town. Um, we'll ask the, uh, the license holder if they wish to provide uh, cross-examination or, or rebuttal of that, uh, then we'll close the hearing. We as a board will have our deliberation relative to potential action or not, uh, and that will uh, close the matter for today, but we'll take that order of events in that way. Each of the people that provide testimony will ask our counsel, uh, Jeff Blake, to, uh, to swear them in. And so, are there any questions about the order, particularly from my board members? Okay, so one thing I will tell you about the microphones, you have to press to talk and then let it up so just so you so everybody can hear you and also so it gets recorded. Um, so I will begin by opening the public hearing. I'll do a roll call vote. So I'll call each of your names and say yes to go into, a, into the public hearing. So uh, to open the public hearing, Doug Slaughter says aye. Gaston de los Reyes, aye. Marianne Walker, aye. Hallie Hughes, aye. So we have our meeting starting at 105. The public hearing has started. And so we'll begin with testimony from uh, our police department relative to the events. Actually, what I'll, I'm sorry, what I'll start with is the letter that was delivered by hand to Richard Annunziata. Hopefully I pronounced his name correctly. On Friday, April 5th, 2019 at 1 p.m., the Amherst Board of License Commissioners will hold a hearing pursuant to General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 23, to discuss your alcoholic beverages license number 04526-RS-0024, for 51 East Pleasant Street, Amherst. The hearing will be held in the town room, second floor, Amherst Town Hall for Boltwood Avenue, Amherst, Mass. The hearing will concern the March 29th and March 30th incident reports filed by the Amherst Police Department, a true copy of which is enclosed. These reports describe events at your establishment that occurred during and after the mandatory closing time on March 29th. You may attend this hearing and be represented by counsel at your own expense if you wish. The purpose of this hearing is to review the allegations documented in the incidents reports and, and certain provisions of MGL Chapter 138 and CMR 204. These allegations, if proven, may constitute violations of the express terms of your license, parens, selling alcohol and allowing drinks to be consumed after mandatory closing time, failure to effectively check IDs, failure to have food available during time of alcohol service, parens. General Laws Chapter 138, Section 34, parens, serving alcohol to minors, parens. 204 CMR 4.03, parens, sale of pitcher to less than two persons, parens, and or 204 CMR 2.05, parens, two parens, permitting a disorder, disturbance, or illegality on premises. These allegations, if proven, would constitute grounds for disciplinary action, including a written warning, suspension, or revocation of your license. If you have any questions, please contact this office, signed by me. So that reads into the record the actual uh, notification that was given to the, uh, to the license holder. Um, and so now I'll begin with uh, the police testimony. So who of the police would like to be sworn in? Actually, we could swear, how many are speaking for the police department, I guess, is the first question. So why don't we have both of you get sworn in by Mr. Blake. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Does that work? There you uh, go. Mr. Chairman, anybody that's gonna testify, including for the, uh, for the establishment, can you please stand up and raise your right hand? Great. Right. Do, do you affirm or swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this matter? Mr. Chairman, they've been sworn in. Excellent. Thank you very much. So if the uh, first officer that would like to speak would come to the microphone here and 
and uh, give testimony, please. Just state your name for us so we know who you are, and then go through uh, your report. You may have to press the button to get the mic to go on. If, it, if the little green light is not on. It is? Awesome. Thank you.
you from my received documents that he had signed this uh, special daily checklist, which I have here, which outlined the, the uh, regulations on his license well after that date. So there was nothing new stating that the uh, story was real at that time. I told Mr. Antonati to leave his clothes. It takes 10 minutes. I want the lights on, and I want everybody out of the building. Which, you know, after a little argument back and forth, he started to do. <coughs> stayed there and observed people exit. I would say there were at least 100 patrons inside the restaurant when I showed up there at past midnight. Uh, as I said, I could still see the bartender serving drinks and people consuming alcohol on the premises. Um, I stayed outside the premises as people were exiting. And as they were exiting, I observed one individual come by me and he was hiding a drink underneath his shirt. It was a one licensed uniformed police officer. I stopped him. I said, what are you doing? And I said, what? And why are you leaving a bottle of drink? He says, oh, OK, you can take it. And he looked about 70, really, to be honest with you. I asked him for ID. Um, he did produce an ID. He was showing he was 19 years old. Um, he told me that he had a fake ID in his wallet. And he said, go to hell with that state of Maine driver's license. It was fake. He was actually placed under arrest for the alcohol violation, so there was fine for possession of alcohol. Uh, that's, so that's basically it. It took about half an hour to clear all the patrons out. Um, I did have a conversation with the doorman, Mr. Hine. I asked him why he had not been um, scanning any licenses at all. He told me he had. I said, listen, I had somebody here all night. They didn't even scan one person. He said, well, I'm only scanning licenses that don't require your permission. And I said, well, that obviously isn't what it is. Um, at that point, like I said, it took about half an hour to clear all the patrons out. We probably had tied up about four or five officers at that time. Some of the patrons were unhappy to see the folks leave. We were trying to keep the peace outside of the establishment. We got everybody out and uh, held the place down. That's basically the plan. Great. Thank you very much. Are there any questions by the board members? I'm wondering if you spoke to Chief Livingstone about Mr. Anguiano's report that he had spoken with him that morning. I did the following um, the following day. I did speak with Ms. Uh, Chief Livingstone. She had told me that he had had a meeting with him that morning, but it was clear during that meeting that there was no change in license status, and that he still had the clothes he wasn't wearing. So at that point, he fired that. So he was lying to me about his continued information. Okay. Any further questions? If not, thank you very much. Appreciate your, your testimony. Um, was there another officer that was going to speak as well? And again, if you just introduce yourself when you get the microphone.
Are there any questions from, from us? I, I have one question. And, um, did you see people getting overserved? In other words, people that were obviously intoxicated continuing to be served, or was that not a factor in, in anything you saw relative to the activities that evening? questions from my colleagues yes the person <clears throat> drinking beer out of the pitcher did you happen to notice if they had cups in their other hand or available in front of them there's another police officer that wanted to uh, provide testimony at this point? If not, there's another town staff that wanted to, I think at this point, I think uh, those were the primary things we wanted to hear about. Um, just a quick reminder to my colleagues that what is in the notice that I read aloud, uh, which indicates uh, particular violations of alcohol license is the primary thing we're focusing on as far as our attention is concerned today. Um, so we'll keep that in mind as we move ahead. Um, was there or are there people from uh, from Porta that wanted to come in and testify or provide commentary? If you would please come forward and state your name at the microphone and and uh, and perhaps provide some explanation of the events of that evening.
other questions? Yeah, I'm just clarifying. Was there a card reader on, on site or, or not? That's the first question. And, and what, was the owner on site or not? And, um, when this occurred? Yes, yeah, so this incident that, that. Yeah, the owner was on site when this did occur. Uh, the, the card reader that they had, I know it's there, it is back in the office. It was a separate reader, a little bit. Um, there was a separate reader that was wired into a laptop and they were having problem getting the software functioning. So they were having what we had, the most trusted resource we had, was the internal news professional playing in the law. It wasn't a separate card reader. If I may follow up. Yes, please. Uh, how long since you'd identified that this card reader was not working? Uh, it had been three days. It had been in and on and off and we were trying to find a way to speak to him and we decided we had to go with a you know, little set of communication uh, that we had found with other trusted resource we had. Mr. Chairman, if I may interject, Mr. Nunziata needs to be sworn in to testify. Yes. Thank you for that. So just as a, one of the things we did before you got here, uh, we, anybody who was providing testimony, we swore into the process. So we'd just like you to take that before you get started. Thank you. So I take it you've given us this. Uh, you'd, would you like to go through these with us, please? Yeah. Yeah, go right ahead. I'd like to, I'd like to make a oh, one other thing before you start. I just want to let you know that we are recording this, both uh, audio and video, uh, which is why we're using microphones. So make sure your microphone is on. So that's one thing. But also just to make you aware that we are, we are as a matter of process, keeping this on, on record electronically. So I just want to make you aware of that. So thank you, if you would, please. OK. Um, in my 30 years of building and development, dealing with hundreds of boards, I realized in, over the years that the board members, through their votes, have the final say on issues in front of them. After the decision has been filed with the town or county, it becomes a final decision. But in Porter's case, this has not happened. A denial for a CO for a class two license has been issued. Exhibit A shows the permit issued from the special permit board. This shows that with a letter showing that it's been filed. Exhibit B shows the conditions that had to be met. All these were done. There was inspections that had done with the plumbing, the electrical, the fire department. Everybody signed off on their permits. There's talk about the lighting plan, the management plan. It was resubmitted to the board and approved. All that was done. One person, Robert Moore, in a letter from Mr. Moore, he writes, reason for denying the class two license. But a closer look at the letter will show you he's making his own interpretation of what the board wants. If you see in the exhibit what's circled, he's saying that it was over occupancy and uh, he wants things demonstrated to him. The board didn't ask for that. The board was specific on what they wanted. And I did every one of them. All the agencies signed off. <coughs> no issues for overcrowding were issued. No facts about overcrowding was done. Just simply, Mr. Mora wants extra things done. So the question is, was Mr. Mora or the board controlling on what needs to be done for my permit to be full? I believe the board wanted, if the board wanted a demonstration, they would have included it in the permit conditions. Exhibit three, Mr. Mora, as town official, makes negative comments to the local business, as a local business, saying he'll be keeping a close eye on Porter. That's in there too. It's on exhibit D. 
a release of a memo from the town was released to the reporter. Under Massachusetts law, chapter four, section 726, beginning January 21st, 2017, a record office is, is the only one that's supposed to give out information and folders on documents held in the town. For Mr. Moore to give out documents, I began to wonder why he would reach out to give this information to reporters. In the same article, Police Chief Livingston comments, he went to Porter and saw no problems. But when he was pushed about the question about viol violations, his com comments was very telling. He states sometimes the competition makes the complaints. It's in there. That opened my eyes. Who would be trying to stop Porter to be a success? And the answer was only one person. That has been constantly trying to delay the class two license which without the class two puts me out of business because as we know, I need the bar to help the restaurant and the kids don't go out till 11 o'clock so they're not gonna go to a bar till 11.30 and then can't get into the other bars which are already packed to the gills already. So that's number one. So at that time I reached out to find out if Mr. Mora had any business dealings with any of my competition. I was amazed to find out that one of his best friends and longtime pal was Chad, the owner of The Spoke, and a business that was 200 feet away that's been hurt by our success in the past, and found out that he's in regular contact with Chad and that he text messages him often. And he's here today, he, he could answer that question right now if he's text back some forth with Chad. But the real question is he texting about Porter and what was said about that. that. That we need to find out. The issue the other was caused by Mr. Moore in the past was to send police every day. He reports we don't have a class two license, shut them down. We do not live in a police state. The, Class two was issued. If there's a problem with the CO that he's refused an issue, that I should have got a summons, and if then I refuse, then you go to a judge. You don't send police officers to shut the place down. By doing that caused problems because everybody went out, and my security, which he's an ex-police chief, said, Rich, by everybody leaving fast. I can't manage everything, it's impossible. That caused the problem that night. Uh, up to that point, we had no problems. The only problem is that I believe the class two license is in fact, if Mr. Moore argues that the CO is not in fact, that should be a summons issue. But if anybody in the state wants to see if I have a class two license, they go to the county or what's recorded of record. And they don't ask, well, gee, does the building commissioner, uh, he didn't approve it, so why is it filed with the county? It's filed with the county for a reason. And another thing, the building commissioner shouldn't be doing inspections. I don't know when's the last time he's done an inspection. There's building inspectors for that. Why would he be at my establishment doing inspections? That raises a couple of more questions for me. I believe Porter has acted responsible and our security has done an excellent job. We have uh, underage testing. Uh, one second. The only question was a management plan and the tips and certification on crowd control, which I brought here, which I'm willing to show everybody, that they're saying that they inspected that and it, it might not be good. That's not a reason not to issue the permit. The, the, the board says the permit's good, it was filed. If he wants to do his interpretation and say this is not good or there was crowds in there, there's correct steps for that not hold back my class two. 
So I believe I have a class two, and if the issue goes any further, I have to go into federal court, and, and not against the town, but I believe this is a personal issue. Nobody else, everybody's been perfect gentlemen, a lady, I have not had one problem until this issue in the last week on whether I have a class two license. And that's all I have to say, I'd answer any questions. Okay, thank you. So. Um, we are primarily concerned with those issues that were, were stated in the letter that was uh, delivered to you a couple of days ago, particularly related to um, selling alcohol and drinks being consumed after the closing time, failure to effectively check IDs, failure, failure to have food available during the time of alcohol service, serving alcohol to minors, sale of a pitcher to less than two persons, um, and then permitting a disorder disturbance or illegal, illegality on the premises. So those are primarily related, you know, uh, expressly to alcohol service and in some ways regardless of time of day. Um, so the particular uh, concerns you have relative to the, the building commissioner and his uh, release of your class two license, which my understanding is he has full uh, authority in that regard the way he has used it, but that's independent of um, the circumstances that we're, we're dealing with uh, this afternoon. Um, but I do want to ask, do my colleagues have any questions for, for the owner? Uh, yeah, I have questions concerning your representation that the chief of police told you that you had a class two license. I, I didn't say that. He, he said he wasn't getting involved in that, that argument. Okay, so then what was the conversation? I, I just quote, if you have an article there from the police commissioner in the Gazette. I just circled it to show you what he said. If you read it, he talks about the competition and they make the complaints. I didn't, I didn't say anything about the police commission. You, you were not here for the testimony from uh, Lieutenant uh, Johnson earlier that your explanation for being open after 1130 was that you had had a conversation with the chief of police that gave you the, the license to do so. Absolutely not. So what was your conversation with? He Ms. took my class two license. He has it on me. I brought it to him. I said, here's my class two. Show me where I'm not allowed to. And he took it with him. He has it. That was my excuse. I didn't bring up the police chief for anything. So um, I'm, I'm a little baffled um, because I don't think a class two was actually issued yet. But I, again, it may have been, you know, the, the uh, class two license was uh, contingent upon meeting certain requirements, which, of course, the building uh, commissioner is the one who signs off on those. And so if, uh, Mr. McCarthy, could you offer some explanation? Is it issued and then it's contingent upon signature by the, by the, uh, the commissioner or? Yes, uh, Stephen McCarthy, licensing coordinator for the town of Amherst. Um, so Mr. Nunziata was granted his class two uh, special permit by the Zoning Board of Appeals, but he has not yet been issued a class two certificate of occupancy. And you can see in your packet, there's a letter from Commissioner Moore dated April 2nd, 2019, that states that there are some things that are still not being um, completed with regards to the special permit. There's condition number seven, which requires electronic ID checking. Um, Mr. Uh, Moore and I went on an inspection yesterday and found that the ID checking was still not being done to a satisfactory manner as their uh, consultant, Mr. McKinney, said it wasn't fully in effect. Um, there's also staff training requirements that have not been completed. Uh, yesterday we were told that none of the bartenders have tips training, which was also a condition of the special permit. So Mr. Nunziata is waiting on his class two certificate of occupancy. Okay. I have a question. This letter is um, dated after the, the police reports. So at, at the, on the date of the incident in question, was uh, the status of Mr. Nunziata's class two license clear? Uh, that is a class two certificate of occupancy, which is outstanding. It is not and has never been issued yet. All right, all right. Which I, can I, I respond? Yes, please. The class two was issued. They told me how to file it in the county, bring back a copy of it. All the inspections have been done. Anything after that about electronic testing, if I'm testing, if I'm not testing, if nobody's testing, it's irrelevant. It's not part of the process. There's no, no condition that says we're going to come out and check your testing before this is issued. It was issued already. 
my eyes, and I think the legal eyes, and the whole community, when they see a class two was filed, licensed, and signed by the board members, they're saying it's a class two. Now, if Mr. Moore has a different interpretation that there was a crowd there, and now he wants to see different things done, that's his priority. He could ask for whatever he wants. But as far as the board is concerned, I met their requirements. They asked for a backflow preventer. They asked for inspections. We spent $100,000. We met every one of them. Anything I do in the future, you want to give me a violation, you can do anything you want. But that class two is licensed. The separate issue about that he didn't issue a CO is a separate issue. If he doesn't recognize the class two, that's a violation. It's like a house. If you live in a house and you don't get a CO, police don't come and rip you out of the house and say you can't live there. You don't have a CO. You, there's a proper way to do it. You have to give a chance to answer and it goes back and forth and a judge. That's why we have judges in this country. But as far as the class two, it was filed. I met the conditions. If Mr. Moore refuses to sign a CO, it's still his denial letter was directly against the board. So he's denying. So which which one when the pub comes to the public now, they see a denial from a building commissioner and approval from the board that's filed. Which one do they go by? And how does the commissioner decide, well, you got 30 days and you've got to do he can't interpret if you let him interpret it you guys are gonna lose your power because then he will control the permit issuing and how the board works. And if we were in front of that board that night, they would agree with you. Did you understand that you did not have the certificate of occupancy granted under your license at that point? The certificate of occupancy, I met all, all requirements for it. But you understood you didn't have one? He didn't issue one. So you didn't have it, you understood that? Yeah, but I have a class two license. Right, so the, 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 and again, I want to keep us sort of on track here a little bit, but I will point this out. In, 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 a, in order for your class two license to be fully in effect, the certificate of occupancy must be uh, issued. And until it is, you, you're, you are in possession of a license, but it's not effective until you can uh, get that occupancy. Um, separate from that, however, I want to bring us as a board of license commissioners relative to uh, the alcohol license. Uh, I want to keep our focus on those things uh, which uh, relate to alcohol service. And so things where uh, uh, the sale of a picture to less than two persons, uh, uh, serving under age, those sort of things, those are independent of certificate of occupancy. The fact they happened or were noticed after uh, the closing is, I think, ancillary. Um, and I think that, that for us, as uh, license commissioners relative to the alcohol license, we're going to focus our attention on that piece. Mr. McCarthy, you had a point. I just wanted to speak to Mr. Uh, Red's last earlier point that uh, relating to the March 21st Port of Daily Checklist, it is true that Mr. Annunziata was not in presence that day, um, but I did have communications with him shortly thereafter, and he confirmed he had received the Port of Daily, the Port of Daily Checklist from his employees. I have had numerous telephone conversations with him making very clear that service of all alcohol and food needs to end at 11.30. Um, and his license does have printed on it that it does, service does end at 11.30. Our procedure has been once a class two certificate of occupancy is issued, then a new license will be printed with the full hours of service. Okay, thank you. Are there other questions? Yes, please. Has there ever been a working ID scanner since Porter has been open? Because you came to us before the incident for a noise, or a live music permit, and yes. one of the reasons yes, we, we it was had granted. One, and we had it, one hooked up to the computer, uh, um, but the police, um, ex-police, um, yeah, said he wanted a, a, a certain one, a, a better one, that counts how many people that there's occupancy. It does both. So we went out and got that. But, but up to that point, we were using that one. And this new one actually counts how many people are in the building. Okay, so I am encouraged by uh, your, your colleague's previous testimony relative to changes that are in, you know, in place and uh, that report as well as far as uh, the uh, acquiring of a new, uh, more sophisticated ID scanner because I think that'll help 
uh, moving forward. Yes. If I may speak to a couple of the other particular instances that we're here to address today. Um, I'm just going down a list, and these are from my notes from the back of the room. Uh, as we were talking about, the officers said they witnessed a number of people enter the room. They said they weren't scanned electronically. That does not mean that they weren't scanned. As again, I have said multiple times, we had a fully trained um, former officer of the law scanning uh, IDs at the door. Uh, and again, as he has stated, uh, and myself, we do have readers in place now and have been working to implement them. Uh, also, the statement about pizza, they said that uh, when the officers asked, they said it only runs 12 to 2. This is not the case. It's never been the case. Um, pizza is all day, so that's not even, I don't know how that's possible that someone would have said that. Uh, but we definitely have all new staff. There's definitely a training issue. Like I said, all the management has been replaced. Um, but that's never been the case. The pizzas always run till 11.30. The full restaurant menu is open until 10 o'clock Sunday through Wednesday and 11 o'clock <coughs> Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So there was no clarification as far as on my end. If it's an issue, does it have to be the full menu that runs the full hours or can it be a limited menu, which was the pizza that was our understanding. So there was a food offering that we keep definitely till 11.30. Um, again, what happened that night, I can't speak to. I can only speak to our training and how we do our business going forward. Obviously, we need more staff. Um, and as we discussed, the lighting, the music, the TVs, these are all items to be addressed and made to, to conform. Uh, other than that, there is the one, and I feel this is, you know, I don't want to be nitpicky or argue semantics. Uh, but when it comes to the single person that was seen with the pitcher of beer, I know that it was asked, did the single person have cups in his hand? Well, it was not asked, did the crowd of people that he was standing with, did any of them have cups? He could have been the guy with the pitcher. I'm not saying that what happened or I wasn't there, but I'm just, that did not come up. Other than that, like I said, if there's any particular questions you'd like me to speak to or address, I'm more than willing. Any other questions for? All right. Actually, if, if Officer Farmer could come back up and, and actually address that last point that he made, I, I would be interested in knowing your answer about whether or not the people that were surrounding the person that had uh, the pitcher was drinking directly from it. Did the, did the people around him have cups? Was, was there any indication that uh, he was potentially serving them with that or it was his pitcher and everybody else had their own, their own alcohol or beverages? So in regards to that, um, I did see him drink directly from it. I did not see him serve any of his friends. It doesn't mean that that did not happen, but I did not observe it myself. Sure. All right. Thank you very much. I, I would like to ask a follow-up question just to, to the right person about the uh, authority of the town to take Mr. Anubiata's license away. I mean, I understand that he doesn't have the class two CO issued, uh, but I'm you, you said you were, you, your physical license was taken from you. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you haven't re received it in return. No, that was the original. I, I, I printed a copy okay. from online. All right. That's right. printed, but uh, I don't have that one. Anymore. I can testify that our inspection yesterday, all three licenses were observed posted on the wall. Okay. Thank you. Are there other, <clears throat> excuse me, are there other questions? Uh, was there anyone else that wanted to provide testimony for this uh, hearing? Seeing none, I will uh, officially close the hearing. We'll do our deliberations after that. We'll do a roll call vote to close the hearing. Uh, so roll call to close the hearing. S Doug Slaughter says aye. Uh, just one second. Yes. Um, could we let our head security guy testify? If he would like to, yes. So if you would like to come forward and, and uh, so before we close the hearing, yes, we won't close the hearing. So I'd like to come forward and, and uh, just identify yourself with the microphone and. Good afternoon. My name is Ken Heim, um, retired police officer. I was hired to uh, oversee the checking of IDs and so forth. I want to add that the, the testimony of the uh, 
the police department and the lieutenant is, is just about 99% of accurate, dead on. I mean, we were having problems with the system. The only, the, my understanding, the only cars we were scanning were the ones that looked questionable. I had another doorman on that night. It's not the system I recommended for the place, but it's the one we're using. It's not going to be the one we are going to use, but um, my understanding, and I too, was that we had the license and we were to be open until, until one, until, you know, two. So, uh, that being said, I don't know what else you can ask me. We, I thought we were doing a pretty good job, but you can always do a better one. And I, like I said, the whole thing came as a big surprise to me uh, when, when we were closed down. So. Right. Any questions for him? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's appreciated. Thank you. So if there's not any other testimony, either from the police officers, town staff, if not, then I'll, I'll move to... Uh, to close the public hearing with a roll call vote, Slaughter says aye. Phyllis Raines, aye. Walker, aye. Hughes, aye. And so our public hearing is closed at 151. At this time, we will, uh, the board will deliberate relative to uh, what we've heard during the hearing, uh, whether or not we'll take action. Um, and so I think, again, I'll remind ourselves as we have our conversation here about this is that we are, are focusing our attention on those things stated in the letter uh, relative to um, uh, the alcohol license in particular um, and so I, I want us to keep our our, our focus on that um, and if uh, if I could so our, our range of actions is fairly broad as it states in the letter anything from uh, a warning uh, suspension revocation that sort of thing but it, I would like to ask our counsel uh, uh, mr. Blake to, to kind of paint a little bit of a picture of, of sort of how ABCC sees these kinds of things and what what their uh, frame of reference is when they look at this. And so if you would please offer that to us. Sure, Mr. Chairman. Again, I'm Jeffrey Blake from, uh, from KP, your uh, KP law, your town council. And um, with respect to uh, suspensions, revocations, or these type of disciplinary hearings before the, appell uh, the ABCC, uh, the ABCC likes to see a graduated uh, um, um, disciplinary schedule. Uh, First offense typically has a has has a lesser suspension, revocation, or uh, or written warning. Second offense, you get it graduates, and finally, you know, third and fourth offenses, it, you you typically will see in some instances revocations or indefinite suspensions. Uh, it's my experience before the ABCC that uh, you know the first one is typically an educational um, is is for education. Uh, they also look to see whether or not the owners have taken responsibility for what's gone on and, and have been receptive to what your board says. I've seen, uh, I've seen the, the range go anywhere from, and, and it also depends upon the, the circumstances, but from, say, a, a written warning up to three, four day suspension in there. And then as, as we go up, up the ladder, second, second offense more, third offense more. So that's what they're looking at. Um, these allegations here, service of a minor, uh, service of, uh, of somebody, uh, a pitcher to somebody who's, um, uh, who's just drinking it, uh, failure to check IDs, which is kind of goes hand in glove with the service of a minor, are pretty serious violations. So at the ABCC, I, I think that they would, they would frown upon uh, an establishment uh, uh, allowing this to go on, especially when the establishment is is relatively new and should be should be trying to, to to really start off on the right foot. You know, that being said, there may be mitigating circumstances there too. So, I mean, you, you've heard what what could be mitigating circumstances. They tried to comply, but that, of course, is going to be up to you. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. So it's now time for us to to uh, to have our discussion about what we think. Uh, what action we might want to take or not. Um, so I'm open to thoughts from my colleagues relative to where they are relative to what we've heard today. Well, I think in, in a way the, the very natural um, penalty here is to be in the status of, of the class one license longer than you hoped for. Uh, and so I, I don't know what power or authority we have to structure. Yeah. The board may hold a public hearing to act reduce the hours of alcohol service. By state law, they cannot be reduced further than 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., but that hearing would require um, separate notice. I believe it's a two-week advertisement process. 
Um, so the board could consider to put that on a future agenda to consider reducing the hours of service for this establishment, but that cannot be issued at this hearing tonight. Thank you. Right. I guess I was speaking to, to its current status, which is lacking the certificate of occupancy to, to actually be the class two that it's approved to be, but hasn't quite born yet, right? So um, that this is my initial thought is that the, um, there are some learning opportunities and you spoke to how you're, you're dealing with those and uh, I'm persuaded by that and yet uh, you've jumped too soon to the next stage and so that stage seems to be what uh, you have to be in a little bit and, and show conformity to the, to the checklists that are in place. That's um, speaking uh, from the top of my head, that's what I see as a, a fitting response here. Inclined with whatever we come up with as well to make mandatory the electronic ID checking and have some sort of notification system to the police department within 24 hours if there is a defect or an issue with the ID checking so that the police department's aware. Can I just make one comment? I, I not, at, not at this time. We're, well, we're just he, doing our. He, he, he was providing additional information relative to and the. I would like the to status. respond to his statement. We're not going to take your, your your statement at this time. He was clarifying the situation of what we as a body could act and do, what actions we could take, and that that was all he was providing is is just information relative to to what actions are are available to us, um, and that would be relative to the actual change your your alcohol license hours of service. Um, so I think the the to sort of start the, the conversation for me and listening to the to the, um, to the testimony of the officers and and um, you know I, I am encouraged by some of the changes that have been offered as as uh, changes to management and and um, some additional uh, uh, software and uh, being allowed or, or being brought online to check IDs a little more uh, uh, accurately than than just visual inspection but but I am concerned. Uh, you know, we have a, a clear case of serving alcohol to a minor. That, reg again, regardless of certificates of occupancy, that's, that is very problematic to me, especially in a college town. We're very, very cautious about that and conscientious about that. Um, the sale of a picture to less than two persons. Again, I think the case is fairly clear that that was what happened. Um, the, um, and then, uh, you know, the, the question of selling of alcohol drinks after the mandatory closing time, and I, I think that, that uh, you know, food was not available when a person asked for it. And so I think that is a requirement of, of the liquor license. So that one's clear to me. Um, I think there's some, some question relative to the certificate of occupancy, the class two license. Can you be open later? Can you not be open later? I, I think it's been made clear, and it was clear all along to, to ownership that that, that you know, that 11.30 was the ending time. I can understand where other staff may not have been as aware of that. However, that evening, um, you know, the odor was on, on hand. Um, but I think independent of that, uh, for me, I'm, I'm disturbed by those other factors that are fairly clear cut. Um, and, and I do think that there is a, uh, an appropriate response to that. And, and uh, I do think there are some, some additional pieces to the license that we would consider as far as the ID scanner. I think we've, we've had conversations, we're new boards, so we've had conversations about how we might be changing our own regulations and structuring them uh, around things like ID scanners and having those be a part of the license requirement. We, we may, uh, given that there's been an issue, uh, make that a part of that. I wouldn't be opposed to that as a, as a potential thing. I think the other thing uh, for me is given the, the, the pieces that are fairly significantly uh, you know, clearly in violation. I'm I'm leaning towards a sh a, a short uh, pot potential suspension of the license. Um, I'm thinking sort of three days, but that's sort of what I'm offering as a suggestion for us to discuss. Um, we'd have to decide if that's the right number of days and or when those days would be. Um, there are uh, you do have with the ABC the ability to appeal, um, but uh, that. That is a longer process, and, and, and we can have staff inform you about that if you aren't aware. Um, but I, I would put that as an, uh, as an initial suggestion of something we might discuss as, as far as action on our part. Um, does anyone have comment or? or? I mean, I, I um, 
I guess I, I, I would like to know when the, the certificate of occupancy will be issued and what, what the conditions are on that, because that's its own punishment. It's currently happening to the business. Um, and uh, so I'd like to know the answer to that before we added anything on top. And I'd also like to have some pr predictability about when the certificate of occupancy will, uh, will issue so that the license um, to be open later goes into effect. Okay, so in that regard, Mr. McCarthy, do you have particular details on that or should Mr. Moore answer that question? And please correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Moore, but um, there is a letter that was written by the building commissioner on April 2nd, 2019, that does state there are certain outstanding items listed in the Zoning Board of Appeals special permit that have not been satisfied yet. That includes um, one of the conditions was for checking guest identification with a state-of-the-art electronic ID a detection system. Mr. Mora, Inspector Roy, uh, Building Inspector Wiskevitz and I were on site at Porta yesterday and spoke to the head security officer and some other staff regarding their ID checking operation. Um, they do have a uh, cell phone based ID system that they demonstrated to us, um, but they said they are waiting for more technology to come in regarding the, the count, which also goes uh, into the next problem they are having regarding their certificate of occupancy, which is that they have not demonstrated that they can um, conform to the 170 guests certificate of occupancy. So uh, we would be looking to see that that technology is in effect and demonstrated to us and to Inspector Roy's satisf satisfaction um, that that is working. Um, they also are required to have door staff and bartenders be crowd control trained and all managers and staff should be KIPP certified. Uh, yesterday we were able to see crowd control certificates uh, mostly dated April 2nd for some staff, um, but they did not have anybody on staff who was KIPP certified. So it's my understanding that the class two certificate of occupancy will issue um, and, and will issue uh, once um, that Mr. Mora has seen to his satisfaction that those conditions have been satisfied. Those are the only remaining outstanding issues to your knowledge? That is my understanding, yes. Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to pose a question to, to you gentlemen just relative to those three items. Um, sounds like the electronic ID checking is coming along rather rapidly. Mm -hmm. Some of the training is in place. Do you know when you should be in, in place to meet that? Every shift. We are, uh, when our doormen show up, we're going to be having everybody come in early and install the app and go through a testing and a training. Okay. We have all our certifications. And okay. Yes, there are crowd management and tips. Nine. There are, there are nine tips. Tips certified. Certified, certified employees. Yeah. So it does sound as though the, the, the certificate of occupancy is close to being yes. ready to go, but and not yet. The, uh, the occupancy, there was a state of the art system that we were looking into where it automatically counts people entering and exiting the building, but to the best of our understanding, the technologies that we found, which we did review with um, Amos Fire, was that it added people as they went into the building, but it did not deduct. Right. So other than that, baseball clickers is the latest, greatest technology that does so. It's subject to human error. So we are still working on that. Okay. All right. Is it in our authority to say that the, the CO shall not issue before a certain date? Uh, certificate of occupancy is not within the Board of License Commissioner's purview. However, if the board would like to consider, I heard there was talk of restricting hours of service until a, um, a more effective uh, management had, system had been found. It would be within the board's purview to schedule. Um, I believe it's two weeks, maybe Mr. Blake can correct me, but there is a notice period um, to hold a hearing on restricting hours of service. So the board could put that on a future agenda if they are so interested. I'm, I'm inclined to let nature take its course on the certificate of occupancy building uh, commissioner's review and, and uh, issue a, a, a formalistic uh, uh, penalty, whether it's... Uh, Are you suggesting that, that should, the penalty should wait until the... No, no, we, two? Just, we act independently with the authority that we have. That, that process seems to be on its, on well, its way right. and, and yeah. in a reasonable order, and we can just, you know, uh, uh, speak to the importance of for example, always having food available and making sure that your systems are in place and, uh, and not to be operating without a certificate of occupancy. Um, you know, I was very pleased to be uh, on this commission when we granted you the entertainment license and I'm disappointed that uh, we, we, we have to deal with this today. Yes. So we've got a, a bit of consensus there. We'll take a formal motion in a moment. Uh, I think the secondary piece is what, what days um, would be the effective days of that. I would be in, inclined to go with weekdays. So 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week. Yes, soon and um, soon and uh, however many we decide, one, one, two, or three um, on a weekday. Yes, that, that would be my inclination. So, if someone would like to make a motion relative to that, either no, well, and it would need to specify number of days and and which days and and expressly identify uh, the calendar. So you may have to get out a calendar to, to note that because we want to be clear about that. The other thing that would go with any suspension is that they would be required to, uh, on the door, the entryway of the business, note that no alcohol service would be occurring during those days of, of that. Food service is certainly allowed. Um, you know, we're not saying you can't open at all. We're just saying you can't serve alcohol if, if that's be the, the movement of the board and, and in what way they go. Um, so if someone would like to offer a motion one way or the other, go right ahead. Um, I move that we do a suspension of Court of License for three weekdays. Did you say Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Where in which no alcohol will be served, and we'll do it uh, through the calendar. I can find one quickly. Okay. Next, week. next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the 9th, 10th, and 11th? No, it'll be the 9th, um, April 9th, 10th, and 11th, 2019. Is there a second? I second. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, these involve a, a suspension of, of license uh, for three days, the 9th, 10th, and 11th of April. Um, is there further discussion? Any other comments or offerings from the board? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So the motion is, is passed. Uh, it's four to zero with one member absent. Um, again, I'm encouraged by the actions you guys are in, in place, uh, putting in place right now regarding your, your tip certification, your crowd control, your, your ID chan you know, scanning, that sort of thing. Um, you know, we are uh, serious about you know, good alcohol control. We don't mind people having a good time. We understand we've got a lot of college students. They're going to press you guys to, to try to sneak in. Uh, that's part of why we're very serious about this sort of thing, and that's, I think, why the board took the action it did. Um, and we hope that, that uh, we can move ahead in a way that's constructive. So thank, thank you both you. very much. Yes, Steve. I would just like to confirm if the board would like to add um, an agenda item on the next available meeting, which would be the 22nd, to consider a restriction of hours of service. This would not obligate the board to do so, but it, if it's noticed, then the board could consider it at that time if necessary. I'm not inclined, but yeah. I want to check. I mean, I think, I think waiting for the, um, to comply and, and to receive the CO is, 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 its, own, is its own pain. Understood. So I think, yeah, that's not necessary, but thank you for asking and clarifying. So at this time in our agenda, we have an opportunity for public comment. Again, uh, under public comment, I was, I, I indicated at this beginning of the meeting, I'll do this again now. Anyone can offer public comment that can be relative to topics under our purview. Um, what I do not want to do is necessarily talk about uh, things related to the hearing we just had necessarily, because we've sort of taken that business under our, uh, under our, uh, purview and, and acted on it, and so I think we're, we're done with that. So is there anyone here for public comment? And seeing none, uh, are there any other topics that anyone needed to bring up relative to anything else? So just as a quick note, uh, our next meeting is next Monday. I will not be here, so. Oh, we, have a, we still have a meeting. Still have a, our regular scheduled meeting next Monday, and I think there's a few items on that. Um, and so hopefully you'll get your agendas and, and uh, packets in the next couple of days. Um, so barring any other thing, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And so we are adjourned at 2.09 p.m.